sounds really, really, really good. Now, when I get down to that po- uh, bottom A yep. um, in 46, 7, 8, 9... Yes. I think that it's just very good. I know it says Santa Rit, um, but I think it's really lovely to just sing that bottom A, have that as a real arrival point. Sure. Um, and then you can weave in and out of the of the next bit. But I think really arrive at that A. Yeah. And yeah. Um, um. yeah. Sounding great. Should we carry on? Okay, great. So the thing about this um, section is that we need to shape it a little Mm -hmm. bit. So as we've got a completely different idea now, and I think um, I think obviously each bit is in two separate uh, sections, as it were, separate idea. So um, so this first one that the pew led to at sixty-two is our is uh, the introduction of the idea. Now. Actually, although it says mezzo piano at um, at bar seventy, I do think that in fact that works. Um, being a little bit more um, appassionato, mm-hmm. and I take that in fact um, uh, in third position with the A, uh, you know, open A, and then um, and then the G sharp. Oh, okay. Hang on a minute. With my other bow. So, um, yeah, so this first first idea, I mean, it's quite nice to have it sort of sh- shimmering, as it were. Um, and really, really vibrate here. Immediately. Don't just think about the top of, of the chord as a, vi- a vibrated chord. So you can really hear the E ringing as well. And then... I think that that could be, that's a sort of a little buzz, a little frisson of excitement there. So um, so I think join those up a little bit more. Um, and I take that uh, in third position. Um, okay. Um, just because I think the open A sticks yeah. out a little bit too much. Got it. And then this one. Um, We can have a little bit more, um, a little bit more rubato, a little bit more plaintive, uh, a little bit, bit sadder and more melancholy.
Yes, so it's that one that I think it could be connected so that the two parts of the phrase belong to each other. Okay. Otherwise, it's yeah, very yeah. stop and start every two uh, bars. So it's yeah. just that, that the tremoland is a little comment on, okay. on what happened. lovely and again it's just about shaping yes. this, um, this part of, of the phrase so um, and I, I wonder about going up on the A string here um, sorry uh, what am I doing yes um, a fourth finger yeah <laughs> no no it sounds lovely it sounds much sweeter than um than the e string to be honest it's quite nice to have a slightly smoochy slide yeah Again, I think you've probably got um, a bit more of a sense of progression um, mm -hmm. uh, here. Um... And now, new section. So this is this is we're, we're getting to a slightly jaunty. Yes. Dance kind of feel to it. Now, I wonder whether you're in not quite the right part of the bow for the start of this section. I, personally, I would take it a lot closer to the frog because it, it, can, it can be neater and tidy, a bit more dance-like uh, because you can take the bow off, obviously off the string a great deal more easily than you could do if you were near the, near the tip. So, okay. rather than here. And then this is just into the string that way. So, 
So that's just a very light um, placing of the bow on the string. Um, it's the it's the usual trouble of the elbow. That's why you're, you haven't um, why the B flat's coming out a bit uh, a bit flat. Okay. I've got to get right round here. So don't forget, keep moving the elbow round. So that you're right round there. Yeah, even more actually. If the elbow could go around even a, a touch more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And don't forget the old trick of practicing in in octaves. <laughs> Always practice harmonic in octaves because then you get the correct hand shape. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, just try it once in octaves. Just have a have a go so you know where you are. It's going to be painful. <laughs> yes. But do you yeah. see how much further round? Yeah. Never mind the intonation, it was a learning process. But you see how much further round you've got to get your elbow in order yes. to be able to be in the correct hand shape. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the the thing that's ha uh, happening is that you're too keen to get the elbow back again. You want it in the safety and comfort of the first position area, but I'm afraid that's not going to happen. So okay. it just has to stay there. Um, you've got to stay here for quite a while. Now don't move anywhere. Look, I'm doing this all on extension back. I'm not moving back here at all. <laughs> My elbow's moved absolutely nowhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, Christine, Christine, let, let's just do a little exercise. When you're here, start on the B flat, and now just, just take your wrist back. Oh, okay, I get it. Just do that, just go up and down. Just, just, just do a scale up and down. Yeah, you're still, still a bit flat on the B flat. It's just, it's quite a, it's quite a big, surprisingly big distance between the A flat and the B flat. It's getting better. It's getting a lot better. I suggest um, in your own time, yeah. practice the whole thing in octaves, but also yeah. just practice that bit in octaves because yeah. once you've got up to the B flat, yeah. kind of you need to stay there until you get back down to the E natural. Right. So um, I think you'll hear it much more clearly as far as the intonation is concerned if you're playing both notes. So do that to get the correct hand shape, but the actual, actual um, quality of the harmonics was beginning to improve a lot. Um, so that's how you'll continue to, uh, to work at that. That's great. Um, okay, so now where were we? Um, 
Yes, um, just going back a little bit, um, uh, I've got a, a slightly smoochy um, uh, fingering for you. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, Uh, yes, here. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's quite fun. Okay. Think of the, um, think of the fingers on the D string rather than the A string, and you'll have to just push the, um, the fingers towards each other, otherwise the E flat will be a little bit sharp. That's it. And and you can you can melt if you basically do a rapid diminuendo through that bow and then vibrate on the G and the E flat. It makes a very nice effect. Okay. Yes, nice. I like it. I like your word, smoochy. <laughs> Well, it is smoochy. This is a really <laughs> smoochy. <laughs> yeah, you have got to smooch it up a bit. <laughs> Great, that's sounding fantastic now. Really, really good. Um, and I just wonder whether there's a little bit more poignancy in the coming um, coming few bars from '94. Um, now it's as if we have a different voice, a different characters come in. And and I think you could be more, um, just be a little more, um, d uh, I don't know, sort of passionate and sad at the same time. Um... So I think you can have the difference between the, the higher, um, the higher notes at 95 and then the depth of sonority that we're going to get at 97. section together a little yeah. bit it doesn't feel like it's an organic um, outpouring and that what happens next is a result of what's just previously happened so I'm just wondering whether maybe the um, we need to slightly rethink the shaping of 99 and those bars there um, so we've got the um, <laughs> So we've got we've got this first idea. So I wonder whether actually the first one you you're doing it quite nicely sort of um, delicato. But maybe more legato here. Rather than rather than angry here, I think um, definitely you can get into the string, but I think that um, it shouldn't be accented. And I think try to join the two phrases up and make the difference in the colour and the sonority rather than having taken time between those two phrases.
Okay, good, good. I think we need to have a little think about the intonation. It, that, that it's quite awkward because you actually have to get your, your wrist right around and your elbow right around with, with these um, double stopping. So... It's always difficult to get the E natural really sweet. And I've got my elbow right around here in order to do that. Um, it's really, really, really awkward there. Um, but I think it's only possible if you get your elbow right round. And, e and even on the next one. It's a big, big, big space. See right. how my fingers are extended right around, right out like that. There's nothing going on there. They're really, really extended as far as they can go. Because again, as we've said before, you and I are, you know, we, all, we have a quite small frame. And so therefore our fingers in this instance have to work quite hard just to make sure that they are in tune. It, yeah, the, C to, it, the C can be in danger of being too sharp, but the E needs to be really sharp. Better. It's very difficult. That is a really awkward one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. We wrote it, Rachel and I. <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah, it's the C. Try, try to take care not not to make the C too sharp because then it doesn't sound nice. Those the C needs to be a lot flatter than you think. Getting better, getting a lot better. And then the next one, should we just take a little look at bar 100? Yeah. So. That's it. I'm liking the shape of your wrist a lot. Now, the only thing you need to take care of, now having, now having done that second beat of the bar so brilliantly, as you come back down to first position, make sure your C isn't sharp. It's a long way between that D and getting back down to the C in first position. So... And again, it's the age old problem. You've got one finger moving a semitone and another finger moving a tone. That's good. Yes, 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 yes. That was beautifully in tune. Well done. Great. Okay, now this this next bit, these pizzicatos, I think you can really relish them because the thing is that uh, we've got all these open strings and yeah. we've got the potential to really vibrate. Now, if you vibrate like mad on the perfect fifth, yeah. the A and the E, it will take the ring over into um, the open strings. So, so watch me. Okay. Do you hear how the yeah, ring... Yeah, yeah is taking over mm. that's it and i think you can spread that lovely four part chord to really maximize the ringing well. yeah. nice This is the most awkward one. Well, again, it's again, it's all in the hand shape, so it's to do with the wrist. See, look where I am. I'm all the way up here. Yeah, it's it, get the wrist right round and the elbow. Okay. 
Okay, all right, Christine, just uh, hang on one second. So I think we have to find a way to make um, these three bars lead into bar 114. So starting at 111 um, with the, sorry, my music's just falling off. Um, so. <laughs> into the string and then I use a second finger for this because the pad is bigger and you can really grip the string so really grip it really really get your finger round right round It's too delicate. I want you to almost get your finger underneath the string. Oh. Aha! That's it. There we go. Yeah, so it's, almost, it's not quite a bar top pizzicato, but yeah. you've really got to grab the string and then the action, if you do it slowly, it will keep that chord really fulsome. Okay. Um, in, the, uh, in the octaves preceding that, do you... Yeah, I take them in position. Uh, so I'm just, um, and then just back to second. Okay. And I just extend back um, on, on my second okay. finger. confession at this point I don't do um I don't do the bottom octave I don't oh. think um, it. um <laughs> oh. yeah I think maybe I used to but I decided that actually it impeded the flow so I'm afraid I've taken a liberty with my own composition <laughs> I guess we're allowed to do that <laughs> Oh, well, one, we will want it really strong now, definitely in um, open A string, yeah. Know, yeah. Great. And now, uh, and if you crescendo through yes. um, that dotted minim there, so that it has a real feeling of that propelling you towards the pizzicato. <laughs> It's pizzicato. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that changes things. No, it's fine. It's fine. It sounds nice, legato as well. But it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed to be this. Uh, is quite nice I think it's quite you know how um, a lot of Spanish music has this fantastic attitude it's real proud yes. stuff and I have to say that I think it's much better to go um, rather than yeah. so I go and if you bash the second finger down yeah. it will be heard not too fast okay That's it. That's it. Um, and try um, do do a really quick one. That's really make it quite a rapid uh, movement as you release the pit. Yes, that's it. Okay. 
Okay. That's the one. That's it. That's it. It's a very interesting thing about pizzicato because very often you have to think how you would do that bow stroke and right. then apply the motion of what the bow stroke might be to the yes. way that you attack the string with the pizzicato finger. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, great. I know it's piano, but I get the feeling that, no, it should be bigger than that. Yeah, I think so too. I am, what, what I tend to do is I keep it quite loud for a while. And then this one as an afterthought. It's quite interesting seeing it written down again, actually, because I, um, I mean, I play the piece from memory, of course, right. uh, because there's no way to turn the page, as you well know. Um, and uh, obviously, pieces evolve as you begin to play them. And so it's quite a while since I realized that that's actually written piano. Um, so, I mean, as, as I say, Rachel and I wrote this piece, Rachel Jennings, um, and I wrote this piece, uh, oh, I, I can't remember now, about maybe 10 years ago or more. Mm. Um, and of course, I've played it many times since then, and, and it's you know I mean my performance has changed, but uh, some some things um, some things just uh, I look at it and I think oh really did we write it that way? <laughs> okay. Nice, 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 nice. Now, just in the interest of getting to the end of the piece, because obviously this next section is um, is identical, yes. um, except that, of course, you're going to start it ponticello and, and slowly, and then you'll gradually um, pick up your pace a little bit. So shall we just go to the final section, 182? Great. No, great. Actually, I, in some circumstances, I now take that last note as a harmonic D, a pizzicato. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah, it, it can it can work. Not in a not in a large venue, but in a smaller venue, it's actually nicer than um, than that. Okay. So, um, I think when Rachel and I were were writing this piece, we felt that this was almost like a chorale. So um, we've had all of this stuff going on, amazing virtuosity, lots of passion, lots of bravura. And I think we both felt that this was more like a Bach kind of um, semplice. So I do a, a quite a, I do open strings. And not very much vibrato. can really enjoy that smoochy slide album. And then, um, actually, now I take this on the G string. Um, okay. Okay. It's just softer and nicer, really.
so when when I was writing this, when we were writing this, um, I sort of felt this was like a kind of strange wash of wind from the past a memory from the past so um and don't don't rush over them it's more poignant if you keep it very delicate um so it, it does not important to get through it quickly So I think it can just feel like it's just quite rapid and it's going to be something and then it just blows away and doesn't get anywhere. So you just yes. you just just take that. time it doesn't matter it's loads and loads of time and um, you know i think it, it's such an atmospheric piece mm -hmm. that um that you know you've got all the time and it's just it leaves it hanging in the air like that so great okay. stuff i mean you've done amazingly to prepare all of that on your own i mean it's it's really good really good christine i'm 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 very i'm impressed and i've also really enjoyed um hearing your musical thoughts on this as well so um yeah terrific absolutely absolutely terrific well done mm. um, yeah i'd like to i'd like to continue on this um, perfect okay uh, so yeah um i'll set up a session maybe in a, in a few weeks absolutely great stuff good well lovely to see you again take care stay well and um and we'll be in touch in due course oh, great thank you okay take care bye bye